All right, so we're gonna heat up this little button, this little plastic button and shear it off to expose the hole like you see here. So we're gonna warm up that, that little button and we're gonna be careful to not direct the heat on this um, strip of a caulking that's here. So we're gonna put the heat on a slight angle and we're gonna heat up this. You're gonna to start to see a little discoloration around where the glue starts to overheat and we're gonna take the uh, heat gun away and we're gonna shear that. Right off. Now while that's off, you got a little bit of um, putty that we're gonna just clean off. And it's gonna leave a little film of it. We're gonna to wanna to get it off. We're using acetone and we're using acetone carefully. We don't wanna wet it. We're just using enough acetone on a rag to just get that schmutz off and have a nice clean uh, surface. Uh, acetone, of course, is uh, the component in nail polish remover, too, so you might have that around the house, you don't have to go out and buy any. And you want to end up with holes that are nice and clean and ready for the rail to be installed. So we have the roof rail on our workbench uh, with the little metal studs sticking up. These are the roof rails that you're going to put on top of the sprinter. And you can see the, the studs that are part of the roof rail. And we're going to put a little roll of... Um, little strip of a uh, butyl putty black butyl putty around each one of these studs there's a rubber washer here already but we're going to put a little bit of putty around each one for like a double uh, layer of uh, of sealing uh, the moisture or potential uh, rain from coming in it's probably unnecessary but we sleep pretty good at night when we do stuff like this so anyway we already took care of the other studs in terms of adding the uh, little rubber butyl rubber sealant and we're going to do that right now Make a little tiny donut, go around it, and you're good to go. Do that on all of them, and we're ready to go. Now, this track snaps together. It's a two-piece track. We snapped it together, but if we're going to pull it apart real quick to show you. Okay, and then you just snap that on. Chunk, chunk, and you're good to go. They all come as a two-piece, and you snap them together to make uh, one piece. All right, so we got the uh, roof rails uh, ready to go. We've taken the little plastic plugs out of all the locations, the whole locations. We cleaned up the uh, little bit of putty with the uh, acetone, and we did it carefully. Uh, we're working on the uh, white truck right now, uh, but once in a while you'll get a blue or a burgundy color sprinter. You got to be very careful with the solvent that you use to take the, uh, the residue from the um, plugs off, because uh, some of those paints are less... Uh, robust when it comes to uh, using solvent. So the acetone or nail polish remover to take that off is something you can use. Just just be careful with it and only use it as uh, as locally as you can on these holes. Okay, so these are all ready to go. We snap the uh, cross rails together, the two piece cross rails. The shorter one, in the case of the 144, goes toward the rear. That's the one with the little slot opening uh, on the back. And we got them snapped together. We're going to flip them right over into place. And then we're going to put the nuts on on the inside. Of course, each one of the studs sticking down from this uh, track has the uh, little donut of uh, butyl tape added to it for the extra uh, insurance on leakage. So we're going to put the nuts on the inside in just a minute. So these are the little studs sticking through that are attached to the underside of the rail. We just flipped the rail onto the truck, and this is the nut that we're going to put on the, each one of these studs. So we're going to thread these on. It's a pretty beefy nut. Uh, it's got a nice thick washer and we're going to thread them on and we're going to snug them up um, With uh, a wrench We're going to start them all first and we're going to snug them up and then we're going to come back and then fully tighten We're not going to jack them down all the way at once. We're going to come back and uh, we're going to um, uh, Tighten them. We're going to snug them and then we're going to come back and tighten them Tighten these uh, We're going to snug down these again and snug these down Okay. And we're going to snug them all. We're not going to jack them down yet. We're going to snug them all and we're going to come back and tighten them. And of course, these are only six millimeter studs, so you're not going to tighten them down to the point where you snap them off. So inside the um, 
kit for your uh, ladder rack, uh, this galvanized ladder rack, will be a side rail kit which is comprised of two pieces. And we're going to show you how they join. This is where the two pieces meet, where you're going to have a sleeve that goes inside uh, the, other, the other part of the uh, rack uh, um, opening. And then these two are going to join here. So we're going to slide them together. And we're going to put the, uh, we're going to put the seamer strips, brackets if you will, in place. Make sure you keep your openings in your hole. And we're going to put the screws, this is the top, we're putting the screws in from the bottom upward once you line everything up. Make sure when these are on this is fully open. You're going to have a washer under the bolt head and you're going to have a washer on the, underneath the nut as well. And we're going to put the nuts and uh, washers on. And that takes care of the side rail. All right, we got the washers on and the nuts, and we're going to tighten it up. Keep Make sure that this stays concentric. Okay, here we go. It's assembled one side rail. So we assembled uh, one of the side rails and laid it on the floor. And then we put the uh, vertical, uh, well, excuse me, the cross rails we inserted into it. And we put the screws in place where they go. And the next thing we're going to do is slide the catwalk on. So this is ready for the catwalk. Okay, so we have these little grommet rings that go on the um, catwalk so that the, uh, there's no metal against metal when this catwalk is installed. And uh, you can see that these are inserted already. Uh, that's what they look like uninserted. And they're quite easy to snap in, uh, as uh, Jim will demonstrate. There. Okay, so we're going to be putting the catwalk on. We start on one end, and we get the rail through. And we're going to set the rest on. And make sure that they go right through the center so it doesn't pop those little rings out. Okay, and we're going to be ready to put the other side rail on. Okay, so we're going to install the side rail, uh, one cross rail at a time. Okay. And we're going to just put the screws in. This catwalk was placed in the center of this roof rack. So what we did was we put a self-tapper screw to act as a stop in the right place. And we're putting another self-tapper screw. So that this catwalk can't slide from side to side now. You can place this catwalk offset if you'd like and do the same thing with the set screws. But we, this one we put right in the middle. This assembly is taking place on a cardboard uh, pad on the floor so we don't scratch the galvanized coating. Which is uh, only takes a couple of minutes to do. Um, so that's why we do that. All right, so we placed the uh, assembled rack onto the top of the sprinter, 
And a measurement that's uh, important to adhere to is this dimension right here. This four and a half inches from the back of this leg to the edge of the black end cap. You got four and a half inches of silver track that you can see. This is on the back of the sprinter. The last of the uh, uh, legs. There's gonna be three legs on each side. This is the rearmost one. This is what it looks like assembled and installed in the track. So the threaded plate is going to slide into this track and then we're going to set the leg on there and then this clamp goes up and around the cross tube. And once you get everything lined up and squared then you can tighten it up. Closer so you can like come down and see the sliding plate. See. So this threaded plate is slid into the track. There's going to be three threaded plates per side of the sprinter because there's three legs per side. So we slid that threaded plate up and we're going to put the, uh, the uh, leg in place. And we're going to thread those. And that's going to be centered underneath the crossbar, just like like this one here. The back one's already on loosely. We talked about the spacing and then we're going to pull the little styrofoam blocks that are underneath the cross rail and pull that out of place and we're going to set this rack right down on these, uh, these legs. So we're going to start the nuts finger tight on all of those before you start tightening them. So that all four of them are in place. Make sure you put a washer underneath the, the head of the bolt. And once we square this off, make sure everything's squared off, left to right. I'm even. And even, we're right going to tighten it all up. Right there. Pinch that tight. Yeah, just doesn't make it tight. You'll pinch it. Yeah, don't over tighten those. You'll start seeing the uh, clamp bending. You're going to want to leave it at that point. And then tighten the bottom bolts that are in the threaded plate. Tighten them up. And then go on to the middle brackets, and then you're going to be done. Make sure everything's tight, tight. Just double check your work, and you're done.